tornado was on the weaker side. This, we had a little more lift on this day, and so as a result, we had um, uh, some slightly stronger non-supercell tornadoes. So this was our, let me go back, this was our uh, outlook on this day. We're talking about uh, our tail, we're talking about a dry line, we're talking about isolated tornadoes, we're talking about strong upper level disturbance. So we've got some lift coming across, uh, we've got some uh, things going on at the ground that we're watching as well. So slight risk in, in Colorado. Uh, this is going to be real hard to see from back there, but I will point out that two points down in Steve's area are in the mid-teens to low 20s. This is on the south side of the Palmer Divide. You go to the north side of the Palmer Divide, we have two points in the mid-50s, northeast wind. That's upslope. That's good if you like storms. Okay? So Steve is high and dry, but we're going to have some storms in our area. Uh, sounding on this day, the Cape was a well, lifted index is minus seven, that's pretty good. Uh, 1,861 joules per kilogram. So that's, that's pretty healthy for Colorado. <clears throat> I will point out that if you're trying to look at non-supercell tornadoes and you're using reflectivity, you're not going to see much. We do see a storm, but where's the tornado? So this loop is from TDEN. <coughs> And so that is uh, one minute data. And you're going to see a, several circulations here. Um, and they're very small scale. Right there is the South Lose Mall tornado. And then when this loop goes again, there's another tornado that comes. Right there. That crossed I-70 and took a semi on pilot. <coughs> and right at the end of the loop, there's another uh, small tornado right in northern Elbert County, right there. You don't see these if you have any map backgrounds on there, and you really have to be looking very closely to see these. And again, as I said before, typically, the report comes in, then we get droplets in the storm, then we see it on radar. So all told this day, five total tornadoes, at least three of them caused damage. The uh, south is small tornado right there. Uh, and then this one caused damage up by Brookfield, and then there's a fifth tornado there in northern California. <coughs> So that gives you an idea of what you might anticipate here in Colorado. We got both supercell occasionally. Typically, those, those are going to be closer to nice. Kansas, although we had that one near the uh, Weld County. Um, and then we get a fair number of these, uh, and we seem to be favored in our area on the north side of the Palmer Divide with the Denver Cyclone. Steve, do you get anything similar on the north side of the Raton Mesa? Like a dry line or a So, uh, 
after the flood, and so all that red up there was the 2013 floods we had. Uh, so we do get floods too. That is somewhere on the order of four billion dollars. The, the price tag on that flood at this point. Uh, the red are tornadoes, the blue is hail. And so we do see quite a bit of severe weather across our area. Um, that is uh, northeast Colorado. This is another look in the metro area and down across the Palmer. So that's just three years of severe weather here in our area. And I probably still have time, but I'm pretty much out of slides. So how are we doing on time? All right, so let's stop and answer any questions anybody has. Yes. No, if we get moderate risk, we start to salivate in our office. Um, <laughs> okay, so we do not see high risk. Now, I let's say. But for the most part, you're going to see preponderance of slight risk, enhanced slight risk now, and a few moderate risks. And when we see moderate risk, we know it's going to be a busy day here in Colorado. So it does happen. I've never, I've never seen a moderate risk plus in Colorado. Because we have, we have one thing here that others don't. We have a terrain that sets off initiation, usually on the, in the southern plain where we're worried about. And the other thing is terrain, the terrain will do is act like a boundary, and as a result, sometimes we get better production of tornadoes because of the terrain in places like Elbert and Lincoln County. Then, then my second question is, especially the last one, so it's beautiful tornado pictures, no visible, does the cyclone structures know about those, or those generally just you know, be uniform? The non supercell? Uh, you talking about the non supercell tornadoes? Correct. I mean, they, even after the tornado develops, there's no semblance of any sort of. Well, you might see, after the tornado develops, you might see a funnel cloud, but no, no mesocyclone, no rotation of the storm. All this was was an existing circulation that was stretched up into an upgrade. What they did, I. I Uh, what, Fountain Creek, 
down in your area, you had several creeks that went. Fountain yeah, Creek was one of them. Well, that's called the West South. Thank you. 